Okay, let's have a class. So today's class, we're going to do a review of the final exam of the lab. Because we finished lots of work after meeting exam. So we're going to do a final exam review. So that's called the final exam review. Okay. First thing first, let's do. What do you have for the microbial analysis on the food products? So we talk about is that microbial analysis of foods. Okay, several things you need to know. The first thing. If I give you a theory in the black, you should tell me what are the major foodborne pathogens for those products. How about tomato? What are the major foodborne pathogens? Salmonella. Okay, if it's a hot dog, what is the major foodborne pathogen? Listeria monocytogenes. How about ground beef? E. coli O157H7. The last one, chicken products. What are they? What are the most important two? Salmonella and Cabylobacter. Now, here's something I want to mention. In the final exam, same as before, you don't need to know the spelling of the bacteria name. All these bacteria names will be on the top on the first page. You only need to pick. Okay? You don't need to know uh, the spelling, I mean, although it's not going to be tedious like the exam three, exam two of the lecture, but all the names will be there. So this is the first thing you know because we talk about passion. The second thing is calculation. So you have your results. You can take a picture, you can count, and I call, say that Yahaya did really good for the chicken products. So let's give an example, a three plates. I just gave you an example, okay? Let's say this is 10 to the minus 1. We didn't do, but we can give you an example. 10 to the 3 and 10 to the 5. So I give you an example. 10 to the 1, we have 425 colonies there. It's a lot. 10 to the 5, we have 10 colonies there. And 10 to the 3, we have 200 colonies. Let's say. So first thing first. What is CFU means? We did already colony forming unit. That's called the CFU. The second thing is that which one you're gonna to have to pick the plates? It's not that you take the average. Remember, the acceptable zone is 30 to 300. Therefore, only this place you're going to use. Not take average, okay? Not average. Very important. Lots of you use a calculator to, oh, calculate the calculator that then don't, not necessary to do. So how are we going to do it then? It depends different products. Now what we can get is this. CFU per ml is equals 200 multiplied by 10 to the 3. That equals 2 multiplied by 10 to the 5. Okay, now it depends on different products. Okay. First of all, let's talk about tomato. Tomato, we're going to transfer them to is log 10 CFU per tomato. So how to do it? Remember we put a tomato there, we, how many liquid we added? 100 microliters, is that right? So how to calculate that? 
That is equals 200 multiplied by 10 to the 3. This is CFU per ml and multiplied by 100 ml. So this end up with 2 multiplied by 10 to the 7. This equals log 7.3. This equals 7.3 log 10 CFU per tomato. Because the whole thing is coming from coming from a tomato. Okay, so this is the first thing. Just calculate for tomato. Second thing, hot dog. Hot dog. How we do it? We need to calculate the square centimeter. Okay, so that will be log 10 CFU per square centimeter. How to do it? Remember, the whole thing we put in a bag. Is that right? With how many? 100 ml. Now, what is the square centimeter of the surface? It is approximately 50 cm square centimeter. So how to calculate? It's 200 multiplied by 10 to the 3, multiplied by 100, then divided by 50. So how, many, how much it is? That is 400 <coughs> multiplied by 10 to the 3. That equals 4 multiplied by 10 to the 5. That is transferring into 5.6 log 10 CFU per square centimeter. OK, that's a hot dog. Number three is ground beef. Ground beef, how we will, will, will do, is we're going to test it. The, uh, the concentration is log 10 CFU per gram. Now remember how we did that. We add approximately 10 gram of ground beef. Then we added a 10 ml nutrient broth. So this whole thing is a system. Because we homogenized, remember? So how to do it? The same thing right here, OK? This is the same. 200 multiplied by 10 to the 3. Then you have to multiply by 10 plus 10 divided by 10. OK? That is a gram coming from ground beef. This is ML coming from nutrient broth. And where does that originally come from? That comes from the 10 gram of the ground beef. So this is 400 multiplied by 10 to the 3. That equals 4 multiplied by 10 to the 5. We're going to transfer. It's the same thing as here. 5.6 log 10 CFU per gram. OK, last one is chicken carcass. Chicken carcass, how we do it? We said it's a big bag, remember? A huge bag. OK, we put a chicken there. And we add 200 ml. And there is no way you do it the other way. So what we do? This is easy. CFU per ml rinse solution. So this is easy. Equals what? 5.3 log 10 CFU per ml rinse solution.
Okay, this is a key for calculation. If you are still not confusing, uh, Carly Long will help you next week Monday. Is that okay? You gotta find him to do, find her how to do the calculation. So go over it again. Let's do the easiest one, chicken. This is easy. Because we talk about the ring solution. So, you get this place, 200 of colony. Dilution factor 10 to the 3. Multiple, get a CFU per ml. This is the same thing, okay? Per ring snit. This is the easiest one, the chicken carcasses. Okay, now we move on to the tomato. Tomato is log CFU per tomato. How many tomato we add? When, add, when added? How many solution we added? 100 ml. Because all the bacteria dispersed into a solution come from that tomato, so this is the concentration, and this is at 100 ml. So this 2 multiplied by 10 to the 7, and that becomes, and then transfer to the log 10, that becomes a, from per tomato. Okay, then we go to the hot dog. Hot dog is coming from the hot dog surface. A surface square centimeter, 50 square centimeter. So, where they come from? They come from that, how many solution? We add 100 ml nutrient broth. So that's why this is 100 ml, uh, 100 ml there. And then this is 50 ml square centimeter. So that's called it that. Ground beef, because we are adding 10 gram and 10 ml, and here ml is equals gram. Okay, so how we do it? Concentration at 10 gram at 10 divided by 10, you get two. So you get 400, and this is CFU program. Okay, is that clear? So this is a concentration, we'll have a question for you. And uh, remember, the final exam question, very close to what we do the review. I'm not gonna make fun for you and give you a set of the question. Maybe the number will change. Okay, maybe when I change it a little bit easy, become 100, to let you easy to do the calculation. But the principles are right here. Okay, so this is a review for microbial analysis of food products. Okay, then, what other else we did? We did a lot, okay. Anti, by all, Pick resistant test. How we did that? Do you remember? Okay, we had agar plates. This agar plates we call it a molar Hilton agar, a very special agar, molar Hilton agar. How many bacteria we added? Do you remember? We're using cotton swab to swab it back and forth, back and forth, turn 90 degree. How many bacteria we added? We call it a 0 0.5 mark Farland standard. So how many it is? That is approximately 10 to the 8 cells per ml. Then what we did, we used a dispenser, is that right? We add a disc there. And let's say we have a P10, we have a 30 TE, what this means? Tetracycline, P10, this means penicillin, Ten microgram, and if this is a thirty TE, what this means? Tetracycline is thirty microgram. Then the whole plates we add a thirty-five degrees Celsius during the incubation, twenty-four hour. What we are looking for is a transparent zone because the transparent zone indicates the inhibitory of the bacteria. 
So you're going to have to measure it. Is that right? That's what we did. We're going to measure the diameter. OK, let's say this diameter is 12. This diameter is 25. If I give you the number, can you compare the table? Is that OK? You can do it. Is that right? OK, so let's just say example, OK? P10. Resistant, intermediate, and susceptible. This is 30 TE. I don't know whether I still can have it. To find it, the, the book is right here. Um, let me see if I still can find that. Uh, find the number if you guys still have it. Um, I can remember the dilution number. Oh, lucky I have one. I have one right here. So let's give an example, okay? Let's say penicillin is, I'll just use ampicillin, ampicillin, okay, it's the same thing. 13, this is Na, and this is 17. And the tetracycline, what I have is 14, and this is 15 to 18, and the last one is 19. Okay, let's say the first number, what I get is 12 millimeter. And the second one, what, what I get is 25 millimeter. So what this means? Which means this bacteria to penicillin is resistant, is that right? And when you see the 25, which means this bacteria to tetracycline is susceptible. Is that correct? Can you feel the table? That's easy, is that right? That's not difficult. Okay, that's called antibiotic resistant test. Okay, this is the second one. Okay, when we finish about this, this. Oh, this is hard to do. Then we, we're gonna need another, we need another blackboard probably, but we'll try, okay? We'll try. We're just gonna remove these one by one. So what else we did? We did a lot of work, okay? Number three, urinary tract infection. What is the symptoms for the urinary tract infection? Dysuria, that's called difficult to pee. What is a major bacteria called UTI? E. coli, it's so simple, urinary E. coli. Oh, you want to just say detail, okay? Female is a risk. Okay, what is the standard for the clinical E. coli? Can be diagnosed as UTI. Is more than 100,000 CFU per ml. And do you remember how we did that? We using a cotton swab and using back and forth turn 90 degrees and we are using top of the loop is that right so we did that now before we do that what else we need to do we need to do a confirmation test and the pretest on McConkey agar and the blood agar and the both of them has to be positive and if blood agar, we see a better hemolytic, what this means? Might be very invasive, is that right? Okay, last one. Before we do any of the bacteria analysis methods, what the first thing what we do is dip, stick. What are the three information we are looking for? White blood cell, which is leukocyte esterase. Second is red blood cell. That's easy. Last one, what we're looking for is nitrite. Those are the three markers for possible testing. 
positive. Is that right? So, if I give you a place, I give you some colony there. Let's say the total colony is 25. Is this guy UTI? No, because the total is 25 multiplied by 10 to the 3. Remember, this 10 to the 3 is a dilution factor because it's on the top. We add 0 0.001 ml. That is 10 to the 3 dilution factor. OK, so that's what we have for the UTI. Now what else we have? We have to remove here. We did another clinical trial. What is the clinical clinical trial? Number four. Throughout culture. So how we did that, remember? We use a candle jar. Now why we want to use a candle jar? Because the candle jar can be generated a micro aerophilic environment. It is about two to five percent of the oxygen there. Okay? Then we had a blood agar. And we using a blood agar to do a streak. What you find there? And some of you we really looking for is a beta hemolytic pinpoint colony. Okay, now there is a simple situation will happen. To make your life a little bit easy, we'll talk about two situations. Situation number one. If you find this under microscope is like a chain, is gram positive, chain and the coxal. And then catalyst test positive. Sorry, catalyst test negative. What this means? It just means it's streptococcus, is that right? Streptococcus. Okay, how we do the confirmation test? Using A disk or P disk. Okay, remember, that's what we do the confirmation test. Okay, let's say the A, B, C, D. If this is a grape shape, okay, gram positive, grape shape. Then what it is? That's catalyst test positive. What does it mean? It could be staphylococcus, is that right? So, what's the confirmation test? Uh, we didn't really do, but we'll mention the lecture later on. You could use manitol salt agar. That's one of the choice. Another one is latex agglutination test. Okay. That's what we have for the throat culture. Okay. Now what else we have? In this class, I left in the middle of the, the calculation. Okay. We did a very big chunk of the test. What's that? Is biochemistry test. 
I want to tell you one thing. That is most likely is a difficult part of this class. So we want to do uh, a review again. Okay, that's why I want to uh, call you to help us to do the review. This is a major reason for some of you didn't do really well for the final exam because of the biochemistry test, because it's a lot. So we want to talk about those. Biochemical test. Okay, I review. What do we do the first time? Three tube fermentation. How we did that? Three tube. What are those three? Glucose, lactose, and sucrose. Okay, how do you know it is positive? Ten yellow, is that right? Is, is acid positive? The reason is phenol red is a pH indicator and the pH 2, pH 3 it is yellow color and at the pH 14 it very much looks like a cherry red so this is the first thing. How do you know there is a gas? And inside of the tube, there is another tube there, if you remember. So you can read the bubble. What's the name of that tube? Durin tube. Okay? Now, which bacteria is gas fermentation positive? Acid fermentation. E. coli, is it right? So simple, okay? Second, urea test. Urea test. How we did that? This is urea. Remember? This is urea is in the liver. And then, if you have a ureus, will break down, become ammonia and carbon dioxide as a gas comes out. And this ammonia will turn a little bit cherry red, a little bit red, I will say. Which bacteria is that? Citrobacter, is that right? We did a citrobacter, now it's a surrogate for Proteus vulgarius. Uh, I will give you two names there, okay? You pick either one is fine. Because we're supposed to use Proteus vulgarius, but we don't have it, so we use a citrobacter as a surrogate. Either one of that, you pick is good, okay? I'll put both names there, one of them is good, okay? So that is for urea test. How we did it? We added, then turns cherry red color, it's possible. So that's urea test. Okay, what else we have? Number three is SIM test. What are we testing for these three things? Sulfide is S. How do you know it's sulfide? Turn black. Because in this media, there is a metallic iron there. Metallic ingredients iron there turns black. Okay, what is I? Is indo. How do you know it's indo positive? By the way, is that we add one drop of the reagent? What's the name of that? Co. 
Okay, by the way, what is in the? Forgot about this? Do you forget? Chapter van. That's window, is that right? Uh, we're not going to test you again, okay? Well, we did already. <laughs> we, we, we're not going to ask you, John, I mean, ask it again. We, we just let you review, you know. So, but you need to know this is called VAC reagent. Okay, that's called VAC will become what kind of color? Cherry red. Okay, which bacteria is indole test positive, by the way? Which one? You shouldn't know this, okay? E. coli. So easy. Which bacteria is sulfide test positive? Citrobacter. Okay, what is M means here? Motility. Okay, how do we know it's a motility test positive? Because it goes everywhere, is that right? If it stays in the middle, it's negative. This is positive, and this is negative. Which bacteria motility test the positive? Probably the Bulgarians. But we don't have it, so it is a secure bacteria. Okay, that's SIM test. Okay, we finish this. What we what else we have? Catalyst test. And this is easy. Okay, H two O two with catalyst, then break down, become oxygen and the water, and this is comes up the bubble. So, is that right? Which bacteria catalyst test the positive one? A staphylococcus, is that right? Staphylococcus. And then we can compare staphylococcus compared to streptococcus. This is positive and this is negative. I remember, because they're generally the oxygen. So, never do all brother agar. If I have a true or false, can you get it? Can catalyst test do on the blood agar? No, you can't do it. Okay, so some questions are easy, not everything is difficult. Number five, what we have? Oxidase test. Now we're not gonna draw electron transport the chain again, okay? Just wanna tell you, this is the one is transferred to cytochrome C. Let the oxygen go to, let the electron go to oxygen. Okay, so that's called the cytochrome C oxidase test. How we do that? We add the oxidase reagent. And then turns what color? Purple color. Which bacteria is positive? It should be nice, here okay? It should be nice, nice here. Is catalase test is oxidase test positive positive. Originally it is pseudomonas. Originally it is pseudomonas, but we don't do it. And I just want to tell you, I put an IC here and the pseudomonas both. You answer one question, is okay. Okay, so that's number five. What else we have? We have a lot. What else we have? Number five, number six, what we did is filler, filler, lanolin, deaminase test. Is that right? How we did that? In a slant. And then we add bacteria, then we add one big drop of ferric chloride. 
or FECL3. Okay, both are fine. We all know that picture. If this is turns dark green is positive. Uh, in this class, we don't find any of them positive. Uh, be respect for our results. So none of them are positive. But I tell you what's the idea that Proteus vulgarius is positive. Okay? Now, what is that? Philalanin, what is philalanin? Is that right? The amine is phenyl pyruvate. When this guy goes in, turns dark green. Okay, that's the amine test. Now we're gonna have another big one here. Uh, I'll just. I'll just remove it. Have a big one here. What's that? I am VC test. Okay, what is I mean? Indo. What is the M mean? This is not a motility, okay? Mesa red. What is the V means? Just say VP is okay, okay. Not the vice president, okay, Vogus Prusky. That's okay, just want to be VC citrate. <clears throat> so why IMVC is important? Remember, we said it's a very magical result compared to E. coli. And uh, Enterobacter. <laughs> What's the result looks like? I am BC. E. coli is positive, positive, negative, negative, and the enterobacter negative, negative, positive, positive. This is a key. Okay? A magic box. So biochemistry, there are so many. There are the seven test. Okay. Almost done, okay? Don't do it, almost done. Not done yet. <coughs> Finish the biochemistry test of what we did. We did a three agar test to see bacteria can use external material other than glucose, other than sugar. So what we did that, that will be an um, um, enzymatic test. So how we do that? Do you remember? We had a first agar. It's called a skin milk agar. Used to test what? Casings. Which is proteus. And remember, we did the two sides. Which side is positive? One side is E. coli, another is Bacillus subtilis. Bacillus subtilis is positive. Is that right? The second test. One side, we add E. coli. The other <coughs> side, we add Staphylococcus aureus. It's in the split blue agar. This is the test the bacteria has lipase, can use lipids. Which one is positive? Staphylococcus aureus is positive. Do you remember the last one? Just a little bit of tricky. One side uh, we add E. coli, the other side we add bacillus subtilis. So what's the media for that one? Starch agar. What we are looking for? Amylase. How do you know starch is there? Don't forget, add iodine. 
Is that right? If the iodine turns brownish color, the starch is still there, no amylase. If the iodine is not turned brownish, the amylase is possible. Bacillus subtilis is possible. Okay? What else we have? Seems like we did a lot. Do you remember a horrible molded bread? Oh, sorry, sandwich? Pathogenic modes, that's what we did. Okay, what are the three major pathogenic modes? Penicillin, Rhydopus, and Aspergenus. How we did the test? What is the reagent we added? On the uh, plastic tape, lacto phenol cotton blue. Okay, this one, don't forget. We will ask you which bacteria looks like our color sheet. So, please be recognize these three different type of the modes. Okay, that's easy, not difficult. We have a last one. What is the last one? Do you remember Petroview? We're testing APC Eric plate counts. ECC, E. coli, and total coliform. First of all, based on the EPA regulation, what is the regulation for drinking water? Zero tolerance for drinking water. So a long time ago, we using coliform. Right now, we using E. coli as an indicator. E. coli indicate what? Fecal contamination. What is the fecal coliform? What is the coliform versus fecal coliform? Incubated temperature. Remember, I move this out. Coliform, basically 35, 37 degrees Celsius versus fecal coliform, 44.5 degrees Celsius. Do you still remember on the petroleum how we know it is uh, E. coli? If we see it is a blue colony with gas, this is E. coli. And if we see only red colony, that is coliform. Then what is total coliform? Add them together is total coliform. If I give you a coliform results, can you count it? Is that right? You can count it. Is that right? You can tell me what is a coliform, what is a E. coli. Remember the gas bubble? Okay. Anything else we we missing? What is the best material to study? You lab notebook. What is the insurance? Lab notebook need to turn in during the final exam. Don't forget, 20 points extra. It's a huge. Okay, and I want to tell you one thing. I may do, let's do final exam on Thursday instead of Tuesday. The reason, just after holiday, some of you are not back. The mind is not back yet. And I will send the email tonight. We'll do on Thursday. 
Tuesday will give you review. And I'll talk to Carly, and uh, she will have a section on Monday and also a section on Tuesday for you guys to, if you have time, okay? And you also have a time when you come back to talk to your friends, talk to your bench partner to complete the lab notebook. Because I always see if we do it just right after Thanksgiving, it's not good. Because you might still amount to turkey and the other stuff. I'm serious. And uh, I know this year may be fine. Last year, the airline delay is horrible. You know, if people are, are not in West Virginia. So we let's do on Thursday, okay? Thursday, right here, 11 o'clock for first lab, we do the final lab exam. Tuesday will be a free, okay? So, what are the best things to read? Lab notebook, fact sheet, you can go over it. Look at all these review video one more time. And the colleague will offer a review section so you guys have time to do it, okay? So that's the deal. Hope everybody do very well.